¿Qué pasa, Anastasia? Hello. Thank you so much for joining again. Um, and the, this week, you are here to uh, talk about a documentary that we just dropped on the International Film Series website last week. And it's, uh, it's, it's called Dark Circle. And this was, um, it was made 40 years ago and it was, uh, it was recently restored. So this is kind of a 40th, you know, 40th year anniversary restoration of this very important documentary. Um, and it has, a, a lot of it uh, has to do with Rocky Flats, uh, which, which is of course just, just eight miles uh, south of us from, from where we are right now uh, standing, talking to each other from. Um, and Rocky Flats made plutonium triggers for nuclear bombs between 1952 and 1992. Uh, it was directed by Chris Beaver and uh, Judy Irving. Judy Irving, IFS customers will recognize her name because she also directed The Wild Parrots of Telegraph Hill and um, Pelican Dreams. And, and both of those were titles that were very successful at the International Film Series. Um, and this is something I mentioned, uh, I, I did talk about um, Dark Circle with uh, Alex too on our podcast last week. Um, and I, I told him how uh, uh, Judy Irving also did some cinematography on Roger and me and um, gets special thanks in the Atomic Cafe. And that, I, I thought that was, uh, for people who know those two films, I think you'll find that Dark Circle as a documentary seems to fall uh, neatly between uh, where those two films, um, you know, just how they were made. Now, I wanted to, uh, of course, with my podcast with Alex, it's all just us talking and there's no visual component. Um, but with, uh, with Anna for our Z briefs, since these are short visual tidbits that we can share with anyone who um, wants to, to tune in, I thought I'd uh, share a couple pictures um, and I'm gonna go, uh, uh, take a little time capsule here. This is a picture that was taken by my father, and it was at the um, that was taken at the 1983 Rocky Flats uh, protest. And uh, I'm the dork on the um, left hand side with the aviator hat. Um, Anastasia, you'll recognize that aviator hat from a recent poker game, I think. Yep. Um, a, a shout out to uh, my good friend from back in high school who's standing next to me, that's Jay Grinelli, um, whose father is uh, the very uh, talented, well-known uh, jazz musician, um, Jerry Grinelli. Um, but anyway, the other thing that I wanted to share was that um, this dark, uh, <clears throat> dark Circle was screened at the International Film Series, but it was also, because of the content, something that my father was very interested in, and he actually organized um, <clears throat> another screening, uh, I think like a year later in 1984, gathering a lot of panelists together. And uh, this was a show that was, um, it was, it was uh, sold out, or not even sold out, because as you can see, it was, it was a free screening. Uh, so it's definitely got some local history, which is kind of fun. But like, what did you think, Anna? I thought that this was one of the most captivating documentaries I had seen in a while. Um, I was just completely, the whole time I was, each new bit of information just kept drawing me in deeper. Uh, I loved the range of footage that they had. They had a lot of archival and for that time contemporary footage that uh, just really, it, evoked a lot of very strong reactions. Um, I'm thinking specifically of the sequence where you're going around the farm seeing how animals have been affected by the radiation and then yeah. also the whole bit with the pigs being tested on. Um, but isn't that, I mean, that, that's, that's a moment that, you know, the, the, the interesting thing for me is that the, the film was, um, it was, it was, uh, re released, it, it won a, a, a prize at the Sundance Film Festival in um, 82 or 83. And I know that I saw it, um, well, I, I probably saw it when my dad screened it in 84. But, um, and I, you know, I, 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 do, I did not remember 
the pig scene, which only means that it was so it was so jarring and traumatizing that I think I I blanked it out. It really puts you off your bacon, doesn't it? I mean, it's um, it's horrible what humans do to uh, well to each other um, yeah. and and to animals. Um, it's uh, it's all there in this documentary, but it's it's a it's an essential viewing because the this is not something that has just gone away. Um, new, <laughs> pro, the the idea of a nuclear uh, you know war is unfortunately um, still very much with us, and as um, as it act, as more countries proliferate with the ability to to access these weapons. We really, people need to be clear eyed, wide eyed about the subject. And if you watch Dark Circle, it will help for sure yeah. uh, in, in covering this stuff. It, it, it had an interesting bunch of backers too, like, like people who helped finance it. Mm -hmm. um, some musicians, which, you know, not too surprising, but like John Denver, Judy Collins, um, but also, you know, the, the NEA, um, which is, you know, no longer funding at the level it was back then. Right. Um, uh, one of the things that I thought was really powerful was how it's, it's interviewing people who live in these homes that are so near Rocky Flats and they're concerned about the, 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 their children. And, and it puts some of these people in an impossible position. And like this one, this one woman in particular who uh, ends up, you know, she she wants to sell her house, and does she tell the people who buy her house about the plutonium poisoning? Nope. <laughs> yeah, Just, and that was such a problem for her with moving in is that she wasn't told to. But that's what I thought was so interesting about this documentary is it really balanced the personal relationship with the situation along with the global situation. It it, it yeah. had a nice balance of the two um, aspects, I guess. But something that you and Alex talked about, which I have to agree, is that um, after watching this, you're wanting more information about what happened since then. And so that is kind of what I walked away with it from, is just... It, it, I, am so, I am so glad that you provided such a beautiful segue uh, on the topic of getting more information, because I just I wanted to give a, a tip of the hat to our friends over at the uh, Norland Library Archive, mm -hmm. because they are sitting on an archive of information um, real, uh, focused and specific to Rocky Flats, which people, anyone, can basically go and um, access that information. And it's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, it is, it's like daily records um, at the plant of accidents, of um, people getting contaminated, and this is important information, and it's it's right there, and it's and there's who knows what's there, you know? It's it's almost like that scene in the back, in the toward tail end of the Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's just warehouse giant warehouse boxes and boxes, and uh, what's what's in each box, right? Well, Norland's got some <laughs> boxes, troves of scanned documents that anyone can basically start to go through. And who knows what you'll find. So um, I highly recommend uh, that you, uh, anyone who's interested in this subject matter, that they check out the Rocky Flats archive material that is available over at Norland. Um, and I also, uh, Anastasia, just I, I want to give a special shout out to, to Anastasia because she uh, did me a favor and um, she went to the Southern Sun to get a growler of um, the kind, uh, which I haven't had in a while and I missed it. So uh, thank you so much. That was very kind of you. Um, you know, uh, while we're all kind of quarantined, remember that there's a lot of uh, uh, local businesses out there that are struggling to kind of still pay the, pay the bills. So, um, and I know that the uh, Mountain Sun, Southern Sun, Under the Sun here in Boulder, they're, they're doing takeout. Um, you can get pizzas out on the, you know, they, they, they've got outdoor seatings. And you can also walk up and get a, uh, a nicely priced growler of uh, a, fine, a fine beverage brewed right there. So don't forget that 
uh, we still need to support each other and we need to look out after each other and that things that happened 40 years ago, like this documentary, um, are still relevant to what are going on right now. And you can um, also go to internationalfilmseries.com and notice that we're gonna have a slew of whole, like a whole bunch of new titles that you'll be able to select and pick and watch and screen from the comfort of your home. Like, and, and that might seem like, well, that's like anything else, but it's not. These theatrical uh, video on demand screenings are doing something very new and unusual. And by that, um, I'll, I'll <clears throat> to illustrate, when I read the New York Times and I go, to, especially, uh, especially the Friday New York Times, it's got a six page uh, spread where you have uh, film critics that basically write up um, the movies that they're screening. Normally, when I'm reading their reviews and I see that they give a New York Times pick to this title or that title, um, it's something that normally will only come play at the international film series maybe three, three months after that write up. And because of these unusual times, uh, a lot of these uh, independent distributors that I do business with are actually um, letting us tap into them right now so that you can watch this, you know, the latest, greatest film. It got a New York Times pick like just the day before. And you can go to the internationalfilmseries.com website and you can watch that movie. And then half the proceeds go to the independent distributor and the other half of the proceeds will go to the international film series. So you're really doing us a solid, and uh, prices range from $4 to $12. And the thing is, if you're in a household, that $12, like how many people do you, uh, your, your roommates with how many people? Three uh, others. So if you, if you do the division, it's actually, it works out pretty well, and you're supporting a good cause. So please do think about coming to... Uh, to the internationalfilmseries.com website and check out what we're offering. Got an, a lot of great, we, we got one that's produced by Walter Murch, um, Ku-53 is coming up. Uh, we've got the latest Ron Howard documentary, uh, Rebuilding Paradise, and um, we've, we've got uh, another uh, animation title that got a New York Times pick. Um, so lots of offerings. Please check out our website. And um, Anastasia, I just thank you so much for <laughs> Uh, coming to uh, to visit me under my carport um, Thank you. while we're distanced uh, to do this. It's always such a pleasure to chat about the movies with you. And I look forward to uh, next week, uh, or maybe we'll take a break next week, but I'll, I'll look forward to the next one regardless. So Me too. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye.